few months ago, Lion Brand had a sale on this totally tubular yarn and I loved it. And I wanted to give it a try, but then when I got it in the mail, I was like, what in the world can I do with this yarn? So this week I decided to come up with a quick and easy pattern that is super beginner friendly and makes a really beautiful cowl. It's very quick, it's very easy. So I'm gonna show you how to make this today. For a full list of supplies, see the description box below. So let's look and see a little bit about this yarn. It is 87 yards or 80 meters in length. It is a size seven jumbo and they suggest using a size Q 15 millimeter hook. And I'm going to be using Red C for my tutorial. This is what it's made out of. A good substitute if you can't get this yarn is Yarn Be Astounding. You can find this at Hobby Lobby. It is $6.99, so it's a lot pricier. And it also has less yardage, so be sure to pay attention to that. It only has 43 yards which is about half of what Lion Brands does. And it also labels it as a size six, but I'm gonna show you the strands side by side. These are exactly the same in, I mean, every way. I, they feel the same, they look the same. So um, while one is labeled six and one is labeled seven, they are the same. So um, I'm going to be using size P hook because I crochet very loosely. That is a 12 millimeter hook. You could use a size Q hook, but I'm going to be using a size P hook because I do crochet so loosely. You're also gonna need a stitch marker and a tape measure. So begin with a slip knot. And this is so easy, y'all. You're gonna make a chain in multiples of two until it measures about 24 and a half inches. So this is going to be the circumference of the cowl. And I want my width of my cowl to be 12 inches or so. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to multiply it by two. And I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of slack. So that's why I say make it in multiples of two until you reach about 24 and a half inches in length. Then you're going to take your chain and be really careful not to twist your chain. And you're going to bring the ends together. And if you're looking closely at the stitches, this is the back loop, in my opinion. Um, normally people don't call it that, but I'm going to. So you're only gonna go through that back loop. And in that very first stitch, I'm going to make a single crochet. I am not slip stitching to join, I'm just going right into the stitch pattern. So you're going to Make a single crochet. And now you are going to mark your stitch. This particular pattern is made by going in the continuous round. So you're going to need to mark the first stitch of every round. Now you're going to chain one and skip the next stitch. Make a single crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. Skip the next stitch, single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet. You're just going to continue repeating this stitch pattern all the way around until you reach your stitch marker. So you're just gonna chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, all the way until you get to the stitch marker. So here I am, I'm, I've got my single crochet and my chain one and I'm skipping one and I'm on the last stitch of the round. My next stitch is my first stitch that I started with. So now I'm gonna chain one and I'm going to skip over my marked stitch. So I'm just gonna skip right over it and go to that chain one space, and I'm going to single crochet in that chain one space there. Now I'm going to take my stitch marker out from that other stitch, and I'm going to place it in the single crochet I just made. This is my first stitch of the round. And now you're just going to continue chaining one, and skipping one 
All the single crochet from here on out should be made in chain one spaces. So that should help you. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. It is that easy. So you're just going to keep doing that until you reach the stitch marker. So here I am at the end of round two. So I've reached the, the uh, space before the stitch marker. I'm going to make a single crochet there. And now I'm going to begin the next round. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to skip over my marked stitch and I'm going to make a single crochet in the chain one space. Now I'm going to take the stitch marker out and put it in the single crochet I just made. And now we're going to continue our stitch pattern. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. And again, all single crochet should be made in the chain one space from the round below. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. The reason I chose the moss stitch is because if you were to do this in all single crochet, it would be way too dense. This chain one space gives it the ability to be a bit stretchy, not so dense, not so stiff, and it actually makes it so beautiful. It's, it makes a really beautiful stitch pattern, even though it's so simple. So just continue repeating this over and over. You are going to make continuous rounds, and every time that you skip over your marked stitch, you're going to move the marker up to the next single crochet. So that is the indication that you are starting a new round. And you'll notice every round it moves to the left. So that is why it's so important to mark your stitch. Don't just go and go and go. You really do need to pay attention to which stitch is the beginning of each round. So continue this until it measures about 10 inches. Now you could go until it measures more than that. If you want a super huge cowl that's just amazingly warm, or if you want to make it go over your head like a snood or whatever, you could just keep going. But that, of course, is going to make you need more yarn. So um, this one I made a little bit bigger, and it required me to have to use two skeins, which really one and a half, maybe not even quite one and a half. But I had to use two of these, and. Um, so for this one that I am showing you how to make, I have taken off an inch and a half. As you can see here, it is smaller. And that is because I'm trying to make an entire cowl using just one skein of this yarn instead of two. And so that's what I'll be doing. I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. I've got about 10 inches. So I'm going to show you how to finish this. So I'm almost to the end of this round. I'm just going to refresh what I'm doing. A single crochet, a chain one, and a skip one. And I'm going to single crochet in the chain one space. And then just continue that until I reach the stitch marker. And again, this is the end of my last round. I've got it the width that I want it, and I'm going to show you how to finish it. So I'm at the chain space before the stitch marker. I am not going to chain one. I'm going to end on a single crochet. And there's that stitch marker. I'm going to take it out. And instead of making a slip stitch to join like you normally would, I'm going to make an invisible join. So watch me carefully and I'll show you how to do that. It's very easy. That's it. Now you're just going to fasten off and weave in your tails.
So here I'm showing you that I've got it 12 inches wide and about 10 inches long. So you can make it as big as you want, but it's totally up to you. I just wanted to try to get it with one skein. Now you can see in this bigger one, the stitch pattern is actually a little bit prettier in my opinion, but it is going to take more yarn. So just keep that in mind. If you've got more than one skein, you could realistically make it just a little bit bigger, but here's what mine looks like in the smaller size. So um, if you're trying to make money with these and sell them, I would try to go a little bit smaller. And also I was going to add, you could add fringe to this. That would be really pretty. But I'm not going to add fringe to mine. I'm just going to weave in the tails and be done with it. That's it. It was that simple. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching!